Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about why women struggle to lose that belly fat after menopause or either during perimenopause, okay? I think this is a very important conversation, not only because quite often when women are talking to me about the options that they've been given when they go to a traditional doctor or a contemporary doctor, many of these options only include hormone replacement therapy. And all of these hormones are gonna be synthetic hormones. And what I've consistently heard is that it works initially and then it seems like the body becomes tolerant to it. And then it becomes this seesaw game. I tried this and then that, and then some other thing and then the side effects. And so I want to give you more of a holistic and natural approach to how you can approach not only how do you drop and lose this belly fat, but also how you even approach the idea of menopause. Because typically when you think about menopause or perimenopause, typically when you're thinking about this, it occurs in women who are between the ages of 40 and 44. But I'm starting to see these signs and symptoms in women in their 30s today. And there's a very good reason why it's happening so early. And it's really important to know and understand that the same way that I've talked to you guys about how when you have an early menses, meaning your period comes earlier than the typical age. I've seen them happen as early as eight and nine years old. When you have an early menses, it puts you at risk for so many different things, health ailments down the line. Well, guess what? When you're having early perimenopause early on in life, it also puts you at increased risk as well, too. So this is a hugely important conversation because, again, these are these are these are risk factors for things like everything from endometriosis to PCOS to even, um, you know, reproductive cancers as well, too. So I not only want to help women sort of navigate these waters as it pertaining to losing belly fat, but overall, how do you even navigate this whole transition from, you know, um, ovaries being completely functional to being non-functional, okay? And that way you not only can age gracefully, but you can age comfortably as well too. So let's get into it. Perimenopause. Perimenopause, again, like I told you guys earlier, it typically happens between the ages of 40 and 44, okay? But now I'm seeing it as early as women in their 30s now. Now, some of the typical signs and symptoms that you will see in the beginning is a shift in the menstrual flow and the cycle. And the flow, the flow becomes typically heavier, so heavier bleeding. And then also with the cycle, you start to see the cycles, instead of getting farther apart, they're getting closer to each other. So instead of having a 28-day cycle, now you have a 17-day cycle. So now you're having a cycle every 17 days. And before I go any further, it's important to know and understand that the more and more you have of these symptoms that I'm about to mention, what it's telling you is that, because first of all, there's a normal component to this. This is a normal transition that happens with every woman in her life where there's a birthing period and a cycle period, and then there isn't. And as you're transitioning through that period between the 30s, 40s, and 50s, there's going to be a shift in your body in terms of how the hormones flow with each other. And if those hormones are disrupted abruptly, then you will experience a lot of symptoms. And a lot of the things that I'm going to mention a little bit later is what causes all of these symptoms, okay? So just keep that in mind as we go through that. There's a normal part of this, a normal transition or that just happens in life. And then there's, there's components to it that make it happen not only earlier, but also can make a lot of these symptoms apparent when they typically aren't, okay? So the benefit to all of this is that if you can understand how you how you could potentially make this work with how society has changed today in terms of our food and our lifestyle, then you can prevent yourself from having to go through all these or even reverse some of these symptoms as well too, okay? So again, one of the early changes that you're gonna see is a shift in the menstrual flow and the menstrual cycle, okay? Heavier bleeding, closer periods, okay? You're also gonna know, notice a sudden surge in estrogen. 
okay? What the body is almost is doing is it's almost like a rebound effect where the ovaries are starting to produce less and less estrogen, so the body spikes it up, okay? And when this occurs, um, and this not only occurs because of the ovaries, but because of other things too, you're gonna experience things like hot flashes, mood swings, vaginal dryness, uh, weight gain, especially belly fat, um, sleep issues. You're gonna be popping up at two or three, three o'clock in the morning all of a sudden. Um, and it's important to know some of these symptoms are gonna make everything worse. Okay, so when you're having these sleep issues and you're not getting sound sleep when you're supposed to be in that rest and recovery mode, it's going to actually increase the amount of ghrelin, a hormone that you produce that causes you to have more cravings. And you're gonna have more cravings, not for the healthy food, you're gonna have more cravings for carbs and sugars, which is gonna make everything worse. So it's important to know that even the symptoms that are being caused by the imbalance, even the symptoms can make everything worse as well too. Dry skin, brain fog, low libido, electric shock. A lot of women will complain of having like tingling in parts of their body or electric, it feels like electric shocks. Okay, so those are signs and symptoms of this perimenopausal, um, uh, perimenopausal symptoms as well too. And then also you start to produce less and less acid as you um, get less and less estrogen as well too. And that can lead to a whole host of things. That could lead to um, deficiencies. That could also lead into a lot of infections as well too. Um, this could also lead into some hormonal imbalances as well too, okay? So it's hugely important to know that as you're transitioning through this period, a lot of the signs and symptoms are the things that I mentioned before. So when you start to see that, hey, I check off on this, I check off on that, I check off on this. Maybe I'm in my 30s, but I'm still going through perimenopause very early, so I need to start to do better with these type of habits, okay? Now, the other thing that's really important about perimenopause, it, t it can last for five to 10 years and sometimes 15 years. Again, I've seen women in their mid-30s, sometimes early 30s with perimenopausal symptoms like hot flashes, okay? So if you're having hot flashes in your early 30s, and sometimes it can, this can last 10 to 15 years for some people. Again, that this is why it's so important we have the conversations about what can we do about shifting the habits so that we not only can help to make this process more seamless, a more seamless transition, because the transition is happening. It's a train and you're on the track, it's going to happen. But the beautiful thing is we, we can make this a beautiful ride, okay? And that's the most important thing, all right? So again, perimenopause can last 10 to 15 years, depending on how early it starts for people, sometimes 15 years, okay? Now, what's happening is that you're going from perimenopause, which is before menopause, into menopause, okay? What's happening in the body is that the ovaries, which are very critical for your menstruation and conception, okay? Having a baby in your menstruation. What's happening is that these ovaries are starting to become less and less functional, okay? Now, why is that critical? Because the ovaries also produce our estro your estrogen and your, pro uh, your progesterone, okay? Progesterone is like the happy molecule, okay? That's what takes away the mood swings. So when you see the mood swings, it's almost like saying there's not enough progesterone there, okay? So uh, literally the signs and symptoms are coming from the, the balance of hormones and other things in the body as well too. I think that's really important to note. The other thing that's really important is that the ovaries are also responsible for ovulation or the releasing of an egg, okay? Every month, right in the middle of the cycle, like on day 14, your ovaries release an egg. The egg is there for fertilization and then potentially to have a baby, okay? But as you go through um, your golden years, what you're gonna notice is that, that, that those ovaries become less and less functional. You have less and less eggs. And as a result, less and less eggs get reproduced, okay? And as a result, what you're going to notice is now the estrogen levels are dropping. 
the body is trying to figure out what to do because for the last 30 or 40 years, it's been in this perfect balance with hormones. And now that the ovaries aren't producing these hormones, the body is trying to figure out where do I get it from, okay? Because estrogen is very important, not only for hormonal imbalance, but for so many other things. And when you throw one hormone off, you throw all of them off. I think that's one thing that fails to get mentioned. When you have a thyroid disorder, it could be, be, be coming from an uh, uh, issue with your estrogen. Okay, low estrogen levels can cause issues with your insulin, okay, which is responsible for your blood sugar, okay? So that when you throw one hormone off, you throw them all off. They're in a symphony. It's really important to know that, all right? Now, once you have officially gone 12 months without a period, okay, 12 months, no menstruation, now you're in postmenopause. Okay, 12 consecutive months of no menstruation. This means that you are now postmenopausal. Okay, now this is typically when women start to see all those symptoms go away. All right, but the, the important thing to know and understand it's important to know that your body has gone through a transition. And even what we notice with women who are postmenopausal, there are other effects as well, too, because now the body isn't producing enough estrogen and hormones that have been essentially part of this health cycle for decades. OK, so it's important to know that things like osteoporosis uh, become, you know, a question, you know, and other conditions as well, too. So it's hugely important to know. All of these lifestyle factors that I'm going to talk about in just a second is not only important to prevent having a rough transition during perimenopause and menopause, but it's also important for even postmenopausal. Okay, after after your menopause is even important for that factor as well too. Okay, so hugely important. The other thing I think is important as well too is that insulin helps to sort of di equally distribute fat. And so as your insulin levels go down, what you're gonna notice is that that fat will, instead of being equally distributed all over the body, now that fat is being concentrated in this abdomen area, okay? So this brings us to why um, that belly fat becomes very difficult to get rid of, okay? Especially for women during menopause and uh, during perimenopause and men menopause, okay? This is why it's so difficult and we're gonna get into that. But to kind of give you a little bit of understanding of what happens when the ovaries stop producing the estrogen and the progesterone, now it goes, all of that regulation now goes to the adrenal glands. And that is a very important um, shift that has occurred because the adrenal glands are the backup system. They are not the primary system. So this is why it's so important that by the time your body makes that shift, you need to be optimal in your health. Because if you're not optimal, what's gonna happen is the, the adrenals are gonna become overworked and you're gonna end up in a condition known as adrenal fatigue, okay? Now that's a whole nother video, but it's also a part of what I'm talking about today. And it's also a part of the solution as well too. OK, so I hope that is kind of give you at least some understanding of what's happening, uh, the signs to look out for and why it's happening as well, too. OK, and we're going to jump into uh, a lot more of the why when I give you these top four reasons why it becomes so difficult to lose the belly fat after menopause. OK, or you start to get that menopause be belly. OK, number one, the number one issue insulin resistance. I know you you guys keep hearing me say this, but I got to keep saying it because it is what it is. And it's not is what it is because this is my philosophy. It is what it is because this is why this is playing a very critical role. And while a lot of things are going wrong in both men and women. Okay. But insulin resistance plays a huge role into why it becomes so difficult to not only lose that belly fat, but also why you're having all of those other symptoms that I talked about as well too. And here's why. Because again, 
as the estrogen levels begin to drop, you begin to lose what is called insulin sensitivity, okay? And what that means is insulin resistance. Your insulin becomes more and more resistant, and which means that it's going to have more and more of a harder time to get the blood sugar into the cell, okay? Remember what I said about hormones. When one is thrown off, it throws off everything, all of the hormones. You throw off one hormone, you throw them all off. Again, I'll go back to that example. Whenever you throw off, you remove one note from a symphony, from a song. The, the song sounds crazy, okay? It's the same thing with hormones. When you throw one hormone off, you're going to throw all of these hormones off. This is why women who go through perimenopause and menopause, they, they have a high incidence of having thyroid issues because of the thyroid hormone now being affected, okay? which is going to be tie, tie into, you know, my last um, cause that I'll talk about in just a second. But again, as insulin levels begin to drop, you become um, less and less insulin sensitive, which means that you're going to have more resistance. And this is going to lead to issues like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. But it's also important to know that insulin is a fat storage hormone. The more insulin you produce, okay? Because what happens is now that the insulin is resistant, you got to produce much more just to get the same effect. And because now you're producing much more of this fat storage hormone, it's telling your body, store fat. The more and more you produce, the more it will tell the body to store fat, okay? And again, this is going to make everything worse. It throws everything off. It not only throws off, now your, your your insulin levels are thrown off, now your blood sugar levels are thrown off. Now you're going to become pre-diabetic and possibly diabetic, okay? Now you're going to start to gain weight, okay? Now you probably get depressed about that because you go to the doctor and he can't tell you what, to, he or she can't tell you what to do. So it's this whole effect that takes place just because, again, there was a shift in the hormones one hormone, initially estrogen, that then threw off the, the insulin, okay? So hugely important. Insulin resistance, you got to correct it. Number two, you're working out wrong, okay? It's important to know and understand that women should work out differently before their cycles, during their cycles. You should shift that, okay? It's important to know that, and I, I think a lot of women don't get that information. And so as a result, they work out the same way consistently. And what happens is your body gets overworked due to overtraining, and this increases cortisol in the body. Cortisol is another hormone. Cortisol is actually a stress hormone that comes from the adrenals. Remember I was talking about once the estrogen is no longer being produced by the ovaries because the ovaries become non-functional, now the adrenals have to make the estrogen and the progesterone, okay? But now you're overworking yourself during workouts or working out not correct, not in the way that aligns with, you know, your biochemistry and your biology. And now that's increasing cortisol, stimulating the adrenals. And now because you're stimulating so much cortisol, guess what? Cortisol is also a fat storage hormone. It is going to tell the body to store fat and then particularly belly fat. The more and more cortisol you produce, which is a stress hormone that comes from the adrenals, the more belly fat you will definitely produce. Okay? So even overtraining yourself, and I know like what you're thinking, you're like, well, I was doing the workout so that I could lose weight. But if you train the wrong way, you overtrain. You will actually stress the body, even though like all forms of exercise are stress to the body. But if you train in the wrong way where you're constantly stimulating the sympathetic ner nervous system without stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the chill pill nervous system versus the sympathetic, which is the excitatory, then it's going to create a lot of stress in the body and it's especially produced through cortisol, a lot of cortisol. Okay. 
So that's overstimulating through sympathetic activity, okay? And so also what you're gonna notice is, is if you don't work out, if you don't, if you don't work out at all, period, okay? Because now unfortunately, there's so many sedentary jobs. Most people sit at their desk today. You know, whereas 50, 60 years ago, we had active lifestyles. Even if, let's say, uh, um, a woman was a stay-at-home mom, she still had a very active lifestyle. Like, I remember my grandmother, like, she was nonstop throughout the day. I mean, having kids was a full-time job. <laughs> and she would be hanging clothes outside, you know, like, grabbing this kid over here, making food over here, washing clothes, doing this still an active lifestyle. And I had a friend once who was, you know, counting, like measuring their caloric intake and also how many calories they were burning throughout the day. And they would work out and do three workouts in a day, two workouts in a day. And she would notice that if she did like two or three workouts were very active throughout the day, she could burn like 700 calories, 800 calories. Okay. And then she had days where she just did house housework and she still burned like 500 calories. Okay. So it's important to know and understand that how you work out is very different because today we just live very, very sedentary lifestyles. Okay. And what's, what happens as a result of a very sedentary lifestyle is that a decrease in muscle, uh, physical activity leads to a decrease in muscle mass. And as you have a decrease in muscle mass, what that's going to tell the body is that you need fewer calories for your metabolism, which means that it's not going to burn as many calories. And because it's not going to burn it, it's going to store it. And guess where it's going to store it? In the belly. Okay, so it's hugely important to know being active is very, very important, but it's also important to understand how to be active. Okay, especially for women, because again, Stress is a as a is a a form of stress, um, in any case and scenario for both men and women. It is a good form of stress, but depending on how you exercise, okay. If you do all sort of go 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 strenuous activity, that is a stress that is going to increase cortisol in the body. Okay, this is one of the reasons why I always tell women if you're struggling with. Um, menopausal symptoms, the menopausal bed, belly, you definitely want to get your cortisol levels checked when you go into your doctor, okay? Number three, chronic stress, okay? Chronic stress. Now we're getting on to the mental side of things, okay? Chronic stress, guess what? The same way if you overwork yourself and it produces cortisol, guess what? If you overwork yourself mentally, too much stress, your body also produces a lot of cortisol as well, too. And guess what? Cortisol is a fat storage hormone. Okay? So you're going to increase cortisol. And you also notice as cortisol increases, you might even notice all of a sudden, now you got cholesterol issues. Now you got high cholesterol. Because you, as you increase cortisol, you're going to increase the amount of cholesterol produced in the body as well, too. So you see how, like, this one transition, decrease in estrogen, could lead to insulin resistance because now insulin is more, uh, sen it reduces the sensitivity of insulin. Okay, so now you become insulin resistant. You also could have sleep issues, which increases the amount of ghrelin hormone that makes you have cravings. It also could cause issues with cortisol when you stress now because you're overworking the adrenals, which are now responsible for making the estrogen and the progesterone that the ovaries used to make. So now that the adrenals become overstimulated, producing more cortisol, which also now can produce extra cholesterol as well, too, which could lead to both a heart attack or a possible stroke. OK, so you can kind of see, again, how these one hormone can shift everything. All right. And the other thing that's really important, again, stress creates cortisol. Cortisol creates belly fat. That is that menopause belly that just won't go anywhere. OK, won't go anywhere. I mean, I see some men with a menopause belly. OK. And again, like it's important to know and understand it's because of these hormonal shifts that are going on. OK. So, again, we'll go back through this. So I'll show you how the problem is the solution. All right. 
And the last one is toxicity. Toxicity. Toxicity from a standpoint of now you're creating all this belly fat, all right? You're eating a diet that is highly processed. You're using house, household products, hygiene products, cosmetic products, makeup products that all have these chemicals in them. Guess what? When these chemicals are put on your skin, put in your mouth, go into your body, the body has to figure out what to do with them. And guess what? It's going to put it in the fat. And guess what? If most of your fat is in this belly region, that's where all the toxins are going to hang out in that fat in the belly region. That's going to make it even more difficult to get rid of the belly fat. Because if you burn the fat, now the toxins spill out into this area where all the vital organs are. It's going to spill out into this area where now your, your kidneys are getting affected by it. Okay? Your lungs are here. Your liver is there. Your, your spleen, etc. So it's important to know and understand that the body will hold on to those toxins because if you're storing fat, it means you're adding toxicity to your diet okay, or to your body. And if you're adding a lot of toxicity to your body, the, to the elimination pathways that eliminate toxins are going to be clogged up. So the body is going to say, well, I can't burn the fat because if I burn the fat, how's it going to get out? You understand? It, it, the elimination pathways are blocked. The elimination pathways are, you know, the bowels. Most people are constipated through the, through the kidneys, okay? Eliminating uric acid, urine, okay? Through the skin. Most people have a lot of skin issues. You'll notice skin issues a lot with a lot of people with hormonal issues. So most of the elimination pathways are blocked up. So the body's going to say, well, I can't release the fat. I got to hold on to it because I don't want these toxins everywhere. Also, from a toxicity standpoint, are things called xenoestrogens. These are fake synthetic estrogens that are now ubiquitous in the environment today, in our food supply, in our environment, outside of us, inside of the home, etc. These xenoestrogens, again, which are fake estrogens, synthetic estrogens, include plastics. So whenever you use plastics, it's going to have some form of a xenoestrogen in it. And all food, most food is wrapped in plastic if you're not getting, you know, um, plant-based whole foods. OK, even some now they're starting to wrap apples and, you know, peppers in plastic today, too. OK, but those plastics have xenoestrogens. Guess what else has uh, plastic also has BPA. OK, pesticides. OK, these are also xenoestrogens. Phthalates, which you'll find in makeup, cosmetic process, products, hygiene products. Also, you know, fake estrogens as well, too and chemicals as well too. So these type of chemicals are creating a toxicity in the body that are actually adding to the amount of estrogen, but it's fake estrogen and it's causing the liver transitioning to toxicity. The liver, which is responsible for getting rid of the toxins is now so saturated with toxins, another elimination pathway to get toxins out. Now the liver becomes so saturated with toxins, it becomes inflamed and now it can't actually do its normal functions. And one of those normal functions is to take excess estrogen. When you have too much estrogen, take that excess estrogen, process it down, put it into the digestive system, and then you essentially have a bowel movement and release it from the body to get rid of that excess estrogen. But guess what? Most people don't have normal liver function these days because of so much toxicity that didn't exist 50, 60 years ago but exists today, okay? Grandmother, great-grandmother and grandmother really never got exposed to that the first two to three decades of their life. And then here we are getting exposed to it on a daily basis for decades, okay? So it's hugely important to know and understand toxins play a huge role as well too. That's why I'm always sort of reiterating how important it is to have that healthy maintenance plan for yourself the same way you got for your car, to do, consistently do a detox. It's not just for getting heavy metals, mucus, acidity, on waste out of the body in the form of fecal matter, but it's also really important for getting rid of all of these excess, excess 
estrogens in the body as well too. Okay, so those are the four primary ways of reasons why it's so difficult to lose that belly fat after menopause, okay? So if those are the four ways that are making it difficult to lose that belly fat after menopause, guess what? Those are also the solutions. Do a detox, get rid of the toxicity. Stress management, hugely important. Working out and working out the right, right way is really important as well too. And then correcting the insulin resistance by throwing out those unhealthy carbs, getting rid of that sweet tooth that you know you have. And that is a huge part of the solution. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this is giving you sort of an understand, a new understanding, uh, uh, not only of how um, menopause and perimenopause um, sort of impact your health and how it happens, but also what you could do about it as well, too. And again, if this is the kind of content that you guys really love and like, uh, if you would love for me to do a masterclass, comment below. Maybe in January or a couple months from now, I can do a masterclass and invite you guys to it and do an even deeper dive to kind of help you guys understand what you could do to not only prevent this, but also how you can create a solution in the uh, case where it's already implemented and started itself. Okay. So in in the, in, the, in the interim, just make sure you focus on diet as the foundation, your lifestyle, okay? Getting sunlight, eating properly, exercising, drinking enough water. Those things are the foundation. Start there first, all right? So until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and share this so we can get this information out to the people. Peace.